I want to tell you a little bit about how we do CI for mobile at Epsi. I work on the infrastructure team. I would probably consider myself an infrastructure plumber, toolsmith. I write a lot of tools. I do a lot of chef stuff, a lot of the like general infrastructure bits. And yeah, today I'm going to talk a little bit about how we do CI for mobile. So Epsi, if you haven't heard of Epsi before, um, we are a marketplace around the world that connects people, that brings people together. If you handmade things yourself, if you craft stuff, you can sell it in Etsy. We bring people together, we enable people to sell and buy from each other um, and hopefully create a more lasting and fulfilling world. And we are known on the technology side of things, I guess, for like deploying a lot. Um, we have a very successful technology stack on the website. We have basically the traditional LAMP stack. We run a giant PHP monolithic application, which we deploy a lot. And we also have this thing that apparently everybody loves mobile. And a lot of our traffic, um, more than 50% to be exact, is actually mobile now. So it's a big and important part as more people try to engage the site on mobile, and um, we're in the same boat as probably everyone else, and we want to make the infrastructure and the ecosystem around mobile, mobile development better. Um, we have a bunch of applications. Most of them are basically um, for buyers. So we have a buy on Etsy app for Android, for Android tablets. We have the same app for the iPhone, for the iPad. We also have an app for sellers. So if you are a seller, you have a shop on Etsy, um, there is an app that just helps you manage your listings, um, yeah, set new, uh, new listings in, um, and they all run on a bunch of devices. We also have some internal apps, so we're just getting started on also creating a lot of the tooling we have internally for uh, mobile platforms. So for example, we have an app called Thief, which is basically you open it and you can figure out is there a meeting room available right now somewhere in the office, and then it tells you, yeah, you can go to. So we have those meetings rooms. They are all named after food and music. So you can see in your phone, oh, Oreo Speedwagon is open, or Bon Bon Jovi, I guess, is open. So we have like a bunch of rooms, and like the next task is to actually figure out where this room is because it's not always obvious, and we have a big office. Um, we also have an app called App Signal, which is like Len's name from Bad Signal. It's basically a way to page someone from the staff directory if you need help, and they get like a mention on IRC and I think a text message and an email. So we have a bunch of different apps, and we also have internal builds for all the public apps. So if you are an employee at Etsy, you can get like the beta builds of all the apps from um, an internal site, and. Basically, we want to make this deployment more like we know deployment, like we know development on the web stack. And when we started out on like um, the mobile side, there was like this very basic premise of every commit should build the main line on the integration machine. So there's no, like traditionally on mobile development, you would have your laptop, one of the developers in the team, as we heard this morning from Jasper, is like, you open the laptop, you build the thing, you upload it on the web page, and Hopefully, that was like the good build, and apparently there's problems with debug symbols and everything. So this was like the classic problem of, hey, it works on my machine. Um, and we didn't want that anymore. So we started with the basic premise of ev everything should build on basically the CI cluster. So what does development look like for us? Um, we run GitHub Enterprise internally. We have all the web code in there. Um, Etsy.com is basically a giant repository that has everything in there. But we have a bunch of other tooling and other repositories on there. Um, development is all on the master branch. That's true for the web side of things, but it's also true for mobile. So feature development takes place in master because that's where we integrate. That's where you know um, this is going to go out. This is where you want to have CI always green. Um, we use pull requests as code reviews. So if you want to get like a quick review on something you wrote on your small 
change you did, there we wrote a command line tool that basically um, takes your patch, um, commits it to a branch, pushes it up to GitHub, and then assigns that issue to someone so that person can review the code. And this is all existing tooling we had for web development. And we're using that on the mobile side as well. So if you change something in iOS code, you run review on the command line, it opens um, a pull request, you specify it someone who's, who should review this on a command line, and that person gets assigned the issue. Jenkins builds um, that version of the app, Com um, comments back on the, if you know, if you've used Travis CI before, that's basically the same model where it, like, it used to comment now, like GitHub has this pull request status API where you can just say this works, and this is what we do. Like we build the tests, we run the lints, and then it reports back on the pull request. This is green, okay, everything's fine. Um, and this is a known workflow for us. It's what we carried over from the web side of things, and we run Jenkins there. It's also what we know on. At Silicon for the web development, we have about 350 build slaves, which are basically LXD containers because they're faster than a full-blown virtual environment. And it turns out that running the Jenkins um, agent is really, really good if you run one on a machine. We used to run, I think, like 10 on one machine, and it just like started trampling all over itself. It was problematic. So we split out those physical hosts into LXC containers. So each container runs one Jenkins agent. We spread them over the um, three SSDs. So when we run I.O. intensive tests, like the DB unit test, for example, um, only ever one intensive job runs on one SSD to not like clobber the disk. Um, most of those bobs are actually attached to Try, which is our tooling that gives you um, a way to build your changes on the CI cluster. And we call them the bobs because they build our tests. Um, and it's basically the same for the mobile world. So except we don't have LXC containers, we have Mac minis racked up. Um, they run the Android and the iOS tool chain. They run lint and builds on each push. So whenever you push to GitHub, we at least run the unit tests, um, the functional tests, and the linting jobs. And this is all automated with Chef. Um, and by all, I mean 98%, because it's OS 10, and there's not like everything in the whole um, Xcode tool chain. You can actually automate with Chef. There's some stuff you still have to click, okay, okay, I agree, I totally have read this agreement, blah, blah, blah. So not everything 100% is automated, but most of it is. Um, and yeah, it's automated with Chef. So Chef runs configuration for a whole infrastructure. Basically, every machine that lives in the Etsy network is configured by Chef, and that's uh, true for production, that's true for development, all development machines run the same cookbooks in production, that's true for the corporate environment, and it's also now true for uh, mobile CI. Um, in addition to that, we also have a device lab. So there's this, we have this very nice full shelf of all different devices you could test on or you would test on. Um, there are different Android devices. There are iPads we have on there. Um, I don't know how many we have by now, but it's, um, it's a big shelf. <laughs> and you can borrow devices if you have to do longer testing. I think like last month I had to fix a bug for mobile login on the Kindle Fire, I think. So there's like a lot of different like edge case bugs we have. Um, if you're at Velocity next week, there will be a talk about how we set this up and how we use it and how it helped us uh, speed up mobile development. Um, yeah, so the whole infrastructure for testing basically looks like this. As I said, everything lives in GitHub. As soon as you push to GitHub, um, that push is tested and linted and everything. And um, what we don't do right now from this is actually cut releases. So that's, the big problem is, as you might know when you are writing mobile apps, is that the API to actually get a release into the App Store 
is not super computer friendly. There are still some manual steps for the most part. Um, but we build everything and we build the release on a release machine. And basically, then you upload the build from that machine. It's still not 100% automated, but it's better than having this one weird laptop somewhere where um, you build a release and you upload it, and that has the version. So we, right now, we have one CI Mac that actually always is used as the build machine. Um, we run a set of functional tests based on Cucumber and Calabash. Um, which basically gives you the functional test suite that we know from the web side of things on mobile devices. The nature of functional tests, however, are that they're a little bit flaky. They're not 100% always um, working. So we're not blocking right now on functional tests, but we um, run them. And we're also using a service called um, AppThort that basically uh, tests stuff on actual mobile devices for us. Um, and of course, we wouldn't be Etsy if we didn't have a dashboard for tests. So um, we have this heat map kind of dashboard that um, gives us an overview of like which tests ran on which platform and the failure rate over, I think, the last week on this dashboard. Um, so we can see like some tests in the middle have been failing more than others. Most of them are stable. Um, and this gives us a really good overview over the current state of CI on mobile, how it works um, for us, and basically where we have to invest to make tests better, what are the current pain points um, we have. So in summer, we started to really improve um, CI for mobile. Um, it's been a very recent undertaking for us. I think it started. I would say it really started end of last year, beginning of this year. Um, we now have repeatable, repeatable tests that run on dedicated infrastructure. We know that if you push, you can get um, insights into does that work on a different machine. Um, we expanded testing to physical devices. That was a big thing for getting mobile web um, up and running, but also tests on actual physical devices. We're still working on improving automation. As I said, we're like 98% there with like having all this mobile CI infrastructure fully chefed. And of course, deployment would be the next awesome thing where you don't have to click through a form anymore, but just like have maybe even Jenkins upload something to get approved by the App Store team. We, if we, when we improve on this, there will definitely be a blog post on our uh, codes craft block. There already is the overview of how we do CI from February. There's a great blog post about our mobile uh, device lab, which we use for testing. Um, of course, if you s think this sounds like fun, you want to help, we're of course hiring. And I think like two minutes left for questions. For actual releases, we do create a release branch right now that only gets. Um, bug fixes. So there's no feature development and nothing that. So we have this. We usually don't do branching in Git, we do branching code. So we try to keep this. So every, all feature development is only in master, and the release branches are really, really short lived and only get bug fixes for that specific release right now. Thank you. Thank you.